Hi, I'm Rick Seldens, and I'd like to talk about the evolution of our photocell measurement circuit from the concept of using a cadmium sulfide resistive photocell through to our design phases with schematics to a prototype and some layouts that we might actually use in production or maybe to build a printed circuit board product. So let's start off over here. Initially, we're starting off with the idea that this little cadmium sulfide photocell changes resistance. It changes resistance quite a bit. So knowing that, we can use a simple voltage divider circuit. And there's a schematic of that voltage divider. Two resistances supplied by a battery in this case, positive on the long side, negative on the short side, that allows current to flow through this loop and we can then measure the voltage in the middle of that voltage divider. At this stage, this is all about the concept. This is about understanding the physics of what happens with our uh, circuit in order to make a measurement. As the resistance of the photocell changes, the balance between these two resistors will change and the voltage output that we're going to measure will change. Now we need to move a little closer to reality. We're going to use our Itsy Bitsy M0. So that we're going to use it instead of a battery. We're going to use the plus 3.3 and ground as our power supply. And we're going to use analog port 4 to read in some values from our measured voltage. So we're starting to see a little reality intruding here, but we're still really looking at schematics. There's our R1. Now we're going to say that that's going to be our fixed resistor. It's going to be 10 kilo ohms. And here's our cadmium sulfide photocell down here. It's got that little squiggly pattern on it that is what it physically looks like. But we're still looking at something that's very much a schematic at the design stage, but with a little more reality, some actual physical components. If we're going to realize this thing, the first thing we need to do is come up with a prototype. And often we'll prototype it on a solderless breadboard like this one. And we need to get into the physical layout of what this hardware actually looks like. Because our Itsy Bitsy board has a USB port on one end, we want to put that USB at the end of the solderless breadboard. And it doesn't have the 3.3 and ground located at opposite ends on the same side. They're actually located here on opposite sides of the USB port. But to keep our schematic looking as close as possible to our prototype, at least I can take that 3.3 volts and connect it to the red rail on our solderless breadboard, ground and connect it to the blue rail down here, and I can put R1 and the cadmium sulfide photocell in the same physical relationship. So it's still possible to understand what's going on. And we see the connection here with a wire going over to pin A4. So our prototype design here looks a lot like our uh, original schematic. And we can still understand that here's the high voltage. And as we go down in either the prototype or in the schematic, we're moving from higher voltage at the top down to lower voltage at the bottom. So we can think of the current as flowing this way and that any voltages that we have in the middle here, like this measured voltage, are going to be somewhere in between plus 3.3 and ground. We can build this thing. Here's what it looks like if we build it. There's the Itsy Bitsy M0, power connection to the red rail, ground connection to the blue rail, our 10K resistor going from positive to this junction here where all three of these are connecting, our cadmium sulfide photocell going from that center junction down to ground here on the blue rail. This yellow wire taking our connection over to pin A4. So we've realized this as a physical prototype. It does take up a lot of space, but we can still understand it the same way that we can understand the concepts from our schematics. If we want to move on and have some more space to work in, we probably want to make this more compact. This is the circuit that came in your kit. 
With this one, we're moving on to a more practical layout diagram for something that's almost a product. We've still got the cadmium photocell. It's going between ground and pin A4. We've still got the 10K resistor. It's going between plus 3.3 and pin A4. So we're still making all the same electrical connections, but we've got everything in a much more compact corner of the breadboard, making things uh, of making space available for other elements in our circuit. However, when we look at this layout diagram, although it's easy to duplicate on the breadboard, it's not immediately obvious that this is a voltage divider circuit. So it helps us to have both the layout diagram to know how to build it and the schematic diagram over here to understand how the physics is working how the current is flowing and what the voltages are going to be. If we were going to build this as an actual product, we'd need a printed circuit board because we don't want to have loose wires. We don't want to be plugging things into sockets and having dubious connections. So we'll have a printed circuit board which has got everything soldered to the board and all of the connections are made instead of with wires with uh, traces printed on the board. This board is from uh, my refrigerator. It's a controller board that uh, failed, and it's got microcontroller components on this side. It's also got a danger sign to let me know that this is where the high voltage is, where the actual uh, stuff that plugs into the AC is. All of these components over here allow us to uh, manage the control and measurement of the low voltage functions in the refrigerator. Now, it's really hard to know how all these pieces go together. It is possible to trace all the little connections back and figure out where they're connecting. And you could work your way backwards to create a schematic from this printed circuit board in a reverse engineering process. But for most of the activities you're going to do, you're going to be working from a concept through a design to prototype and realization, and you'll probably stop here without actually creating a custom printed circuit board. For assignments and exams, it's going to be really important that you be able to demonstrate a good understanding of how these circuits work. That's something you're going to have to be able to do using schematics so that you can explain what's going on with the various voltages and how they're connected into the components that you're working with. The other thing you're going to need to be able to do on tests and in assignments is to produce a practical layout for how to actually connect up the circuits. That's where you'll need these layout diagrams, either a simple one like this that looks a lot like the schematic, or a more compact one like this that's more realizable and practical. We could easily give you a question on a test saying, here's this diagram, what does it represent? Draw a schematic and expect you to go from here back over to something like this to demonstrate that you understand that it's a voltage divider. On the other hand, we could ask you in a, in a lab to take this schematic or this schematic and realize it as a layout so that you can make an actual measurement. So you should be comfortable going in both directions, either from a layout diagram that makes it clear how everything's connected back to a schematic for understanding, or from the understanding and a schematic of how you'd like to connect things to a practical connection that will allow you to actually make some measurements. So you need to be comfortable with both the hardware and with a diagrammatic representation that you can explain.